What is the best QRP HF radio, which includes single sideband? Not just a small and compact CW transceiver, which those have their place too, if that's what you're looking for. But this video is going to be about what is the best available option for QRP transceivers that are smaller, backpackable, a little bit more portable, that includes single sideband and sometimes a built-in sound card for digital modes. It's coming up right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews, news, and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. Thank you for joining the channel today. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB, and this is part of the New Ham Workshop, a series of videos I've put on YouTube that direct people on where to get started with amateur radio after you get your first technician license, uh, what radios to buy for handhelds, what radios to buy for your mobile vehicle, perhaps for your home base, or your ham shack, as we call it sometimes. This video today is going to be targeted to those of you who have just recently received your general upgrade. And the reason I say that is because all of these radios are HF radios. A couple of them have some VHF, UHF options. A couple of them have some digital options. All of them have single sideband option as an option. And all of them do have CW as an option, but they're not CW only radios. There's other videos on YouTube. I'll link them in the description below. But today we're going to be talking about my top nine choices for HF QRP single sideband capable radios for the new ham radio operator that wants to do backpacking, portable, summits on the air, parks on the air, something like this, something that's small and compact and can be used in the field. So check this out. We should first start off by defining what QRP is. Those of you who might be new to amateur radio may not understand that term. QRP is basically low power. It means you are using low power. Most contests will say QRP is 10 watts or less. Some of these radios will only do 5 watts on their internal battery. They might do 10 watts on their external battery. One of the radios will do 20 watts on an external battery. So we're going to define anything 20 watts and lower today as QRP. Some of them can go down as, lo as low as half a watt or one watt, and some people just like to do that for fun. But QRP is defined as low power, something that is typically 10 watts or lower, and you're going out and making contacts with low power, and it's just a fun challenge to do, especially if you're up on a summit. So QRP means low power, not a 100-watt radio, and it's important to define it that way. We're going to start out today with listing these nine radios that are my recommendations. And quite frankly, they're just about everything that's on the market today. But this will give you a good indication of what's available, how much they cost, which features each one has, and so forth. We're going to go in the order today, like normal, like I do these videos normally, we're going to go in the order today of price. We're going to start with the lowest priced. And we're going to work our way up to the highest priced. Consequently, and ironically, the one that is the lowest priced today is also the one with the highest power. So the Zygu G90, Zygu is a Chinese company. I'll tell you where all these are made as we go along. Zygu or Shagu. Some people call it Shagu. I think the, the proper way to pronounce it is Shagu. Is a, has a G90 F HF transceiver that sells for about $450 on BridgecomSystems.com. There's several other websites where you can find these transceivers. Links to everything we talk about today will be in the description below. So go check that out for greater detail. This is a 20-watt QRP radio that has a very small screen on it, but does include a waterfall and a band scope, so you can kind of tune around the band and see what kind of signals are popping up on the waterfall band scope at the time. It does not include an internal battery, so you have to carry along a, like a BioNO or a PO4 battery along with it, but it will do a maximum output of 20 watts on single sideband. So you can get a little bit more power out of this radio than most of the other ones we're going to talk about today. It does not have a built-in sound card, so it requires what's called a CE19 device to plug in in between the radio and the com and your computer if you want to operate digital modes such as FT8, JT65, and etc. It does cover all of the HF bands from 10 meters down to 160 meters. And it'll receive continuously through there and transmit on the amateur radio bands. But it won't go any higher than 10 meters, so you can't work 6 meters or VHF, UHF with it. So 449 is what this is currently listed at. For those of you who might be watching this video some months after it was released, go back and check the prices. Prices can fluctuate. So the prices today, when I'm recording this video, may not be the same as they are 
two months, six months, a year from now. So go check the prices for the most up-to-date information. We're going to move over here to the FX4C, which is actually a brand new radio. I just got this radio in the other day. I actually bought it directly from the gentleman creating the radio. You can see on eBay here, when we go back to that page in a second, that it's selling for about $680. However, the actual price is closer to $500. And I'm going to get some information between now and the time this video posts as to where you can buy this radio. Because you can buy it from eBay, but there are a lot of fakes out there on eBay. So be sure to make be sure to check and, and make sure you're buying it from the right place. This is a great little radio. No internal battery. It does have an internal sound card, so you can plug it directly into the computer and do FT8 with it. It will do a maximum output power of 10 watts on single sideband with an external battery, and it's about half the size of a KX2. It's very small and compact. Got a really nice display on it, really nice digital screen. I've got a couple of videos I'm working on specifically for this radio to take it out, parks in the air, use it with FT8 and do some contacts with it like that. Just as like an example, you'll see those videos on this channel if they haven't posted yet, depending on when this one posts, when those post and whatever. I kind of got a lot of things going on right now. But this is a great radio, the FX4C, which is kind of like an update of the old FX4 that LNR Pre Precision used to create and sell. I think those have been discontinued. The gentleman who designed that, which I don't know if it's the same guy or not, honestly, but I, I, I kind of have the feeling that it's the same gentleman who designed that that's designing this one. He is from China, or at least he has a Chinese call sign. Bravo Golf 2 Foxtrot X-Ray is his call sign. He designs this, this transceiver. It works very well. It's got a lot of extra features in it because of the 10-watt output and the built-in sound card in such a small package. So you can get these for about 500 bucks plus shipping, and by the time this video posts, I'll have a link below for exactly where to do that. But FX4C, those of you who are on summits on the air and looking to pack very lightly, this is an excellent choice for a feature-packed radio that will give you lots of stuff that you might not be able to get in some of the models that were made prior to this one. Moving up the chain here a little bit is the Zygu or Shagu, as they some people like to call it, X5105. Now, this one's been out for a while. This is probably old. Well, it's not the oldest one. It's one of the older models that Shagu has in production at the time of this recording. It has an internal battery, so you can turn it on and transmit 5 watts with the internal battery. With the external battery, I believe you can get up to 10 watts out of it. It does include the 6-meter band, so unlike the G90, this one will go up to 6 meters. It has a black and white screen. Uh, the previous two radios we just talked about had color screens. This one has a black and white screen, although it is a much larger than the G90 and the FX4C screen simply because of the form factor. It does not have an internal sound card, so you still have to use the same CE19 device to plug in in between it and your computer. If you want to do digital modes like PSK31 or, J or F JT8, FT8, these kinds of modes, Whisper, these kinds of modes... But it comes in at $5.99 from RadioOddity.com. You can save a $15 discount on a $65 or more purchase at RadioOddity for anything that RadioOddity sells with the coupon code listed in the description below. So if you decide to buy this radio or anything else from RadioOddity.com, check the coupon code in the description below to save $15 off of your purchase. $5.99 for this radio. It has a BNC connector on the outside of it, its own internal battery. It's all self-inclusive. You can take it. It's got an excellent, excellent internal tuner. I should have mentioned that about the, uh, the G90 as well. The G90 has an excellent internal tuner. All of the Shagu products have great internal antenna tuners. So you can take a random wire or an infed half wave or something like that out to the field, have a very lightweight pack, put an antenna in a tree, tune it up if it's not resonant on the frequency you want to be on, and you can be on the air in no time because of the internal battery and compact features of this radio. 599 is where the X5105 comes in on the video today. Now this one here is the latest and greatest from Shagu, which is the X6100 and incorporates a color screen with a color waterfall. Similar to the 5105, but updated features. It does have a built-in sound card, so you can plug this radio directly into your computer and bypass all of the extra cables and devices in between the radio and the computer. It just uses a single USB cable. You plug it in, and you're good to go. So you can easily do Whisper, FT8, JT8, PSK31, all these digital modes on it. It is fairly new at the time of this recording, so they're still working some bugs out of it. So far, since this radio released a couple months ago, they've been releasing about two firmware updates per month. But 
And each firmware update has a great improvement, fixes some bugs, and adds some new features to it. The radio does advertise Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, although at the time of this recording, they have been more difficult to get into production. I do have one of these radios. It's right here, and you can see how the form factor of it is. This is compared to the FX4C, which is almost half the size of it. But it does have a nice internal battery, does 5 watts on the internal battery. You can plug it into an external battery, and it'll, it'll output 10 watts on single sideband. It does have the built-in sound card, so it's easy to do FT8. It does have some firmware updates that it probably needs between now and the time it's, like, full featured full production but it's it you know it what it works really well and shagu is very good about releasing firmware updates so if this is something that you want to tinker with something that has a beautiful screen on it like what's in the picture right here that i'll show again beautiful screen on it easy to set up excellent internal antenna tuner just like the previous shagu models that we talked about for only 639 dollars at radioaddy.com this could be a great radio that will last you a long long time because they're going to continue making firmware updates to it because it's so new now everything we've talked about so far has been chinese made we're going to move up into the japanese market right here over at gigaparts.com, they have the Yezu FT818ND 6-watt HF VHF UHF transceiver. This one does have a built-in battery, so you can use it self-sustaining. You can use it on all-mode HF. It'll go to 6 meters, it'll go to 2 meters, and it'll go to 440, and it'll do all-mode on those. So you can do CW on 2 meters and 440. You can do FT8 digital modes. You can do single sideband on 2 meters and 440. It is easy to operate those modes from this radio with only a with only a six watt internal battery pack so it's a little bit more limited on the output power but it offers you more features on different bands than the previous models do this radio has been out for a while i wouldn't be surprised if yezu came along one of these days and discontinued this model in lieu of a new model it is it's probably the oldest radio we're going to talk well maybe the second oldest radio we're going to talk about today but there's a lot of people who still use this radio they really like it they think it's a great tool in their toolkit big time yezu fans out there really love this radio and if you're looking for something with internal battery and a lot of extra features including vhf uhf all mode cw FT8 capable and whatnot. This could be an excellent radio for your choice. Coming in at $649 at gigaparts.com. This one's get definitely getting added to the list today. Okay, now we're going to move into the really cool stuff. Elecraft, made in the USA. Elecraft is made in the USA, and I am proud to support Elecraft on this channel because I really like products that are made in the USA. The next one that comes in is a KX2 transceiver. You can get an assembled kit for about $9.49 on elecraft.com. Now, this kit comes with several options. You can buy a package kit right here that comes with internal tuners. The Elecraft does have the capability to add an internal tuner. You have to add it after the fact. Everything in Elecraft is modular, okay? So you've got the base radio. You can add an internal tuner. You can add an internal battery pack. They do not have the capability to add an internal sound card. So the, the KX2 and the KX3 that we're going to talk about here in just a minute do not have internal sound cards. So if you want to do some sort of digital FT8 or Whisper or something like that, you do have to have a device in between the radio and the computer to enable the sound card feature. So they don't offer that at all. But the KX2 offers 10 to 80 meters. It does 5 watts on the internal battery, 10 watts on the external battery. So you can plug it into an external battery supply you can get the transceiver alone for about 949 on elecraft.com and these things are made in the usa elecraft is out of california great fantastic transceivers if you ever talk to people on summits on the air or especially who are doing d expeditions most of those guys are using elecraft equipment there are some diehard icom and yezu guys out there as well nothing wrong with any of those radios but elecraft being made in the usa i usually give an extra nod towards these radios like flex radio and elecraft that are made in the usa because that's something i'm proud of so the kx2 coming in just under a thousand dollars 10 watts on high power with an external battery five watts on on high power with an internal battery Internal antenna tuner, which is something you can add later, obviously, for, a, for an extra charge, but the base package starts at 950 and you can choose what you want from there. Definitely adding that one to the list today. 
This one here I'm really excited about because I have one of these. Check this thing out right here. This is a really neat radio out of Russia. It is the Discovery Lab 599 TX500. Lab 599, Lab 599 is the company. Go to lab599.com. You can see the page that I just showed. It, it is very small, very lightweight, very thin and compact. It does 60 to 160 meters. It will do 10 watts output on an external battery. It does not have an internal battery at all, which is one of the reasons it's so small, like this right here. So it does not have the option for an internal battery. 60 to 160 meters, ham band. General receive coverage 0 0.5 to 56 megahertz. So it'll go through the six meter band. High performance 32 bit floating point DSP display. It'll do CW, single sideband, digital AM, and FM. So FM for 10 meters and 6 meters if you want to use that sort of thing. It only weighs about 19.4 ounces, which is half of a kilogram. Just over half of a kilogram. So this is a really cool radio because it's small and compact. It's got a beautiful monochrome display on it. I've done a couple of videos about this radio on the channel. Uh, go back and check those out if you haven't seen those yet. Right now, the only place to buy this radio inside of the USA is HRO. And right now, at the time of this recording, HRO is sold out of them. There's been a lot of supply chain issues for getting these radios manufactured and shipped to HRO from the manufacturing company. This has affected everybody. It's nothing against Lab 599 at all. This is one of the reasons for the delays and all these radios that we're seeing is because of shortages and delays and just supply chain issues across the globe right now. Again, 10 watts output, no internal tuner. They make an external tuner you can add on to it later. No internal battery. There's a couple of different companies working on batteries for it right now that kind of match up to it, but you can use your standard BioNO battery on it. It comes with a power plug that comes off of the radio that's got two prongs on it, which of course I put power poles on mine. It has, it's very small and compact and lightweight. You can get this for just under $1,000. Ham Radio Outlet, uh, hamradio.com is their website. There's other vendors in Europe and Asia and South America that sell these. So check with your respective ham radio dealers or just go to lab599.com and shoot those guys an email and say, hey, I live in this country. Where can I buy one of your radios? Okay, and now we come to the ICOM IC705. This is a Japanese radio, similar to Yezu. Yezu and I ICOM are both made in Japan. All the Shagu stuff is made in China. Lab 599 is out of Russia. This one is a pretty much a pinnacle, almost top-of-the-line radio in the amateur radio world today. About the only thing this radio does not have is an internal tuner. It has an excellent, beautiful color screen display. It will do all mode on HF uh, six to 160, or 10 to 160 meters. It will do 6 meters VHF. It will do 2 meters in 440, 2 meters VHF, 440 UHF. All mode, single sideband, digital, and CW. It has a built-in sound card, so you just plug it right into the computer and go. No need for extra hardware in between the radio and the computer. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, which work incredibly well. So you can connect it to a network via Wi-Fi and use the ICOM remote software to control your rig. You can connect a Bluetooth headset and walk around the house and listen to a net you want to check into and use the PTT on the Bluetooth to key up, something like that. It's got a lot of extra feature-packed specifics to this radio. It's been a very good contender in the QRP world ever since it dropped uh, just over a year ago. It will do five watts on the internal battery. It's not really an internal battery as much it is as it is a battery that attaches to the back of the radio and detaches. So you can actually have separate internal batteries. You can actually pick up two or three or four of these and take them with you, make sure they're all charged up and then have extra power on the radio itself while you're in the field. But this is a really cool radio. It does, it has a lot of extra features. It'll only do five watts on the internal battery, but if you switch it over to the external battery, uh, BioNO, something like that, it's got a plug on the side here. And again, I took my power cable for this radio and put power poles on it. So it'll plug directly into a BioNO or a PO4 battery. So if you choose to do that, you can get a 10 watt output on this radio on single sideband. It'll do 10 watts on FT8. And it's just an all-around good radio. A little bit more expensive coming in at $13.49 right now. These were $13.99 when they dropped, so the price has already come down a little bit. I think I saw them for around $12.49 or $12.99 during Black Friday last November. 
So if it's something you want to kind of keep your eye on and wait for the next sale, maybe Dayton Ham Venture, they'll have them on sale again, in, which is, happens in May every, every, every year. But this is a fantastic radio. It has just about everything you would ever want for a QRP radio, except for an internal tuner. But if you're using a resonant antenna, it doesn't matter. So it really depends on which antenna you want to use, how much antenna weight you want to carry, how much coax you want to carry, that kind of thing. But Everybody I know who's bought this radio loves it. It's a great addition to the amateur radio QRP lineup, and it's definitely getting added to the list today. Last but not least is one of my favorite radios, and again, it's one that I personally own, which is an Elecraft KX3. The KX3 is the big brother to the KX2, but it's actually older than the KX2. The KX3 came out first. This was one of their first QRP rigs that Elecraft released that included single sideband. They had a KX1, which was CW only. They discontinu discontinued that one a long time ago. Then they came out with the KX3. That was this big, larger form factor, uh, large um, amber backlit, but monochrome screen, no waterfall, nothing like that. It does six to 160 meters, and you can install an internal antenna tuner in it, and you can install an internal battery pack in it. And with the internal battery pack, it'll do about five watts, but with an external battery pack and the latest firmware, it'll do about 15 watts. So it does more power output than the 705. It's also a little bit more, a little bit more expensive than the 705 at 1359 today with the February special discount. Now you know when I'm recording this video. Regular price of well, you can get the kit for 1359. You can get it factory assembled for $20 more at 1379. You can add a two-meter module. Once again, everything in Elecraft is modular. So you have to add the internal tuner if you want it. You have to add the internal battery. Well, it comes with an internal bat, uh, AA battery holder that you could put regular double battery, AA batteries in. You can even put rechargeable double, double, AA batteries in it if you want to. There is a board you can add to the KX3 so that when you plug in the KX3, it'll charge the internal batteries if you have rechargeable batteries inside of it. However, that's an extra board you have to add. If you want to run it on AA batteries that are rechargeable and you don't have that board installed, you have to take the batteries out of the radio, charge them up outside the radio, put them back in the radio. It's not that hard to do. It comes apart really easily with these screws on the side of it right here. But it's got a lot of extra stuff. You can even add a 2-meter module to it to do, I think, up to 5 watts on 2 meters. It'll do all mode, so single sideband, CW, and with an interface between this and the computer, such as a rig expert or a digi rig or a signal link or something like that you can run digital modes on ft8 so you can't it doesn't have an internal sound card and it has all the other things we've talked about today but you have to buy them separately so 1359 is really kind of the base price once you start adding all that stuff it does increase the price quite a bit we can get a kx3 package shack in the box that includes a KX3, PX3, which is the, the pan adapter waterfall that you can add externally. And that comes in about $2,800. You can get a kit that you build yourself for about $100 less than that, or about $50 less than that. So a little bit more expensive options. But again, the Elecraft made in the USA, which I'm always happy to promote things that are made in the USA. Made in the USA, lots of de-expeditions, lots of guys who go out of town to, to islands to activate, to do summits on the air. These are very sturdy radios. Very The longevity of these radios is going to last you a very long time. They're going to be a great addition. The, the receiver sensitivity is fantastic. You can look them up on the Sherwood reports, and they have excellent receiver sensitivity. They have excellent transmit audio. They're very rugged. You can modular, modular li, rise. Modular rise. Is that a word? Modular rise? They're modular. So you can add the components that you want to it and not add the components you don't want to it. So that makes it for a very more customizable radio than anything else we've talked about today. So coming in at just over, just under $1,400 for just the base kit, which you can then build on later. This one is the ninth radio we're going to talk about today, but it's one of my favorite radios to activate. You are going to see some more Parks on the Air activations coming up on this channel about that are done with this radio with a couple of different amps I have too, because... QRP. QRP is cool, but it's not really my thing because I don't have mountains around here. If you have mountain hiking, QRP is fun. You can get up 10, 12,000 feet and make contacts all day long. So that's it, guys. That's the nine QRP single sideband radios that are available to us as amateur radio operators today. 
in the United States and also worldwide. We've got three or four models that are made in China, two models that are made in Japan, and two models that are made in the USA, which, again, I'm always happy to promote stuff that's made in the USA. But these are all the models that you can actually still order today that are in production that you can get still get support for from their respective vendors and manufacturers. What do you use for QRP when you go out and do soda or poda? Or do you not like QRP? You know, as I've said before in many videos, I like the idea of QRP, and I've done some QRP from Costa Rica, which is quite fun. But if you're sitting on a beach or sitting in a state park and trying to call QRP, it's more challenging. Now, parks on the air, since everybody's hunting parks on the air, it's actually quite easy to do it from parks on the air. But if I wanted to set up in my backyard and just call CQ QRP, I might and might not be able to make anything any contacts at all just because I'm in I'm in the lowlands down here. I'm not on the side of a mountain or anything. You want to get up on the side of a mountain, you want to hike up to a, a summit for summits on the air, you want to go to a state park that's on the side of the mountain like we have in Montesano, Alabama, great. You can use QRP all day long. You can make contacts and you can work pileups with it. No problem at all. But who likes QRP and what radio do you use and which one of these radios do you recommend and why? Put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.